Oh, hello, everyone. Um, we are going to go ahead and kickstart the presentation for you all. This is the virtual college exploration fair through CACRO for North and South Carolina students. Um, for those of you kind of logging in and everything, remember that you can always ask questions by using the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Um, your questions will remain anonymous and the um, presenters will get back to you with an answer as soon as they can. Um, your camera and microphone are completely off. And so any questions that you do have, make sure you're using that Q&A feature. And then um, if you would like to sign up for any more additional CACRO sessions, um, you can actually just go to our website, www.cacro.org. That is C-A-C-R-A-O. And then this recording also, uh, this, this whole thing will be recorded and put on our website as well within one week. So if you go to our website, cacro.org, you should be able to find this exact session um, within a week. All right. Sorry about that. I am <laughs> getting my screen shifted over. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to talk through some information we hope will be useful um, for those of you looking to come back to school or to start school for the first time. Um, but first, let's do some introduction of um, who we are. My name is Angie Moore. I am representing the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, I am a student services specialist. I specialize with helping adult transfer and military affiliated students um, find their path to school and through the admissions process. Um, so I have been in undergraduate admissions for seven years, but have been here on campus helping military affiliated students for over 17. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to, I guess I should have put my slide up there. That's my information, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Taylor. Sorry about that, still muted. So, hello, everybody. My name is Taylor Hall. I'm one of the associate directors of undergraduate admissions at NC State University. I'm also the transfer student coordinator, and I am a member of the Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, at NC State University. I've been in college admissions for 21 years, 17 of them at NC State University. So you could say I've been in it for a few minutes. But anyway, um, I'll turn it over to who's ever next. Thank you for coming. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sydney Leister. I work with East Carolina University and I am a transfer admissions counselor. So I work with specifically transfer students, but very closely with our Veteran Student Services Center. So I'm very much familiar with the process when it comes to military affiliated students. Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. I'm Brooke Van and I'm one of the assistant directors of transfer recruitment for Fayetteville State University. Um, I've been with the institution for about five years. Um, and within the last three months, I recently became the liaison um, for our VA services. And then I am Devaney Hemingway, and I'm one of our assistant directors of transfer and adult admissions at Queens University of Charlotte. Um, and you can kind of see some of the different things that I'm involved in below. Awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is just talk a little bit about the process all the way through from looking for a school um, to finding the school that you are wanting to attend. So um, first step is finding a school that will fit your needs. So there's a couple of things that I always advise students to look for. One, if you know what you want to study, it makes the process looking for a school a lot easier. If you don't know what you want to study, um, typically what I recommend students is to think about um, things that you like to do, things that you can see yourself doing long term, and then think backwards. So in essence, if you um, feel like you want to work in healthcare and you want to help people, but maybe you don't want to directly work with people, um, 
you know, you're considering nursing, well, maybe not nursing, but, you know, doing a surgical tech. Those are things that you want to ask yourself to figure out, okay, well, I know what I want to do long term, and it'll make it easier to help you figure out what type of program or institution will be best fit for you. Um, so that's a good starting point. Another good thing to ask is, are you looking for an online or an in-person program? Um, whatever your current needs right now, um, take into consideration your next step and any potential that you have for changing your future plans. So just make sure that the schools that you're looking at have that versatility that you need in case your circumstances change. Because as we know with military, it happens quite a bit. Um, so a couple things to consider as part of that process, not just um, online or in person, um, but do they support your benefits? Are you looking at using a combination? Do they have student support groups? Um, those are the types of things that you want to look for as you are selecting a campus. But the most important thing is making a connection. So if you found the institutions, um, you've narrowed it down a couple places that you're looking at, um, the best thing to do is to make a connection. Um, so connecting with a campus, my recommendation is to begin with the admissions office. You're going to find folks who are very similar to us and our counterpoints that will um, be knowledgeable about different programs, the university or the, pro the process for admission. Um, and it's a good idea to touch base with them because any institution can look great on paper and look like it fits your needs. Uh, but you, if you don't do a little bit of research, you may find yourself in a place that um, overall doesn't feel right to you. So take some opportunities to try and visit campus. Um, a lot of schools will have campus tours. They'll have departmental information sessions. Um, one good thing about those events that they have, typically there are currently enrolled students that are involved in those events. Those are great resources for you. You can ask them about their experience. Um, all of the things that maybe they would have liked to have known as they were going through the process, those are all good things. Um, just to highlight some of the things you should be looking for, um, points of interest. So library, student union, um, bookstore, those are all very important things that you wouldn't typically think to look at while you're looking for a school, um, but it is very important to feel that um, when you're on campus that you're in the right place. Some other things to take a look at, um, are there jobs on campus? Is there a career or a professional development center that can help you look for a job if maybe while you're going to school or especially afterwards? A lot of programs will have that career piece built in. Um, they'll help you kind of figure out how to get into the field that you're studying. But a lot of places will have their own separate office that'll help you with things like interview techniques, building your resume, um, those sort of things. So just be on the lookout for that. Also, um, look out for clubs and organizations. Um, it's very good to interact with students who are interested in the same things. A lot of people want to get in, get their studies done, get their degree and get out. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but don't underestimate uh, the value of interacting with other folks who are interested in um, academic and social things that are very similar to you. Um, if you're looking for on-campus housing, all of those things are very important part of the research process and your admissions counselor or point of contact will be able to help direct you as far as the things that you need to know. Um, once you have found a school and you're ready to apply, um, there's some good stuff to know and I will turn it over to Brooke and she will give you more information on that. Thanks, Angie. Um, so yes, the um, process of pretty much finding the school that best fits you, everything she mentioned, you know, how the campus is, the campus life, um, what they can provide for you as far as assistance, especially if you are a veteran or um, dependent, those are things that are really helping you out with that process. So once that's complete and you have narrowed it down, it is time to apply. Um, so the first thing to, that you'll have to do is, of course, submit your application. Um, it is very important to um, take a look into some deadlines, which I'll get into in a little bit, um, of when your program is going to have that upcoming deadline um, so that you can already be prepared and get that um, taken care of. So once you do your application, you'll then have to provide your application fee. 
So I know for Fayetteville State University, this week is free application week. Um, so definitely today, do your research to see if there are any schools um, that are participating in free application week for transfer students. It's typically for freshmen, um, but it never hurts to just take a look to see when they are offering those free application waivers. Um, so every application fee will vary depending on the school. Um, and so you'll have to submit that on the front end once you apply. Once you apply, you'll then have to provide your college transcripts. Pretty much all institutions are the same in requiring the official transcripts. Um, there are a lot of eScript services that are now offered. Um, so that is the preferred method for a lot of schools are the um, electronic transcripts, but it has to come from that institution directly. Um, you also will need to provide your, if you're doing a sealed, um, I'm sorry, a paper copy of your transcript, it has to be sealed. So as long as it's official, um, those documents will be needed in order to move forward. Uh, following that, of course, you can provide your joint service transcript or your AC transcript if that's applicable to you. Um, and that's to ensure that we can really get as many credits as possible for you. Um, so you'll be surprised how many institutions can take. Um, so definitely provide that and that can come directly from you. Um, if you have that official copy. Following um, your JST or your ACE, um, you'll then provide your DD-214. So your discharge paperwork is very important. Um, there are a few factors that institutions will have to look into um, if you have been discharged from the military. So providing that document is very important in order to move forward. Um, the next item is the GI Bill certification. So um, most institutions do not require that for the actual admissions decision, um, but it is important so that we can know what you may qualify for when you are seeking your benefits. So not to get that admissions letter, but for your tuition purposes, that is very important. Um, and then next, like I said, those deadlines are very important. Um, most early deadlines will entail with scholarship purposes. So early admission is best if you are looking for fall terms. Um, and then you may have a program such as nursing. Um, with the nursing department, they have cutoffs. So every school is different. Some only do one application process throughout the entire year. Um, some may have about two. So really looking into those deadlines is important. Um, and then the good part is you receive your offer of admission. So um, following your offer, you'll then do your intent to enroll to get started with um, joining that institution. Thank you. I'll go ahead and hand it over. So everybody, it's a big daunting task actually at, at times and sometimes it might seem a little bit overwhelming. So that's why we all came together to give you this presentation. And so you, you've done the search and you've done the look and you've done the application as Brooke just went over and what all the documents are going to be needed. And now you've been accepted to one or quite a few handful of um, universities and colleges. So basically preparing for tra transfer, you know, what happens after you've been admitted, you know, the steps that you need to take after you've been admitted, really just starting from the top, basically. One of the things that a lot of us have found for students is that you really should go you know, take one last visit to each school that you are seriously considering and walk around the campus on your own, not necessarily taking the admissions tour. Hopefully you've already done that. And this is a chance for you to just kind of get a feel on your own and, you know, with a friend, a family member or whoever you want to bring. Uh, a lot of students just do it all by themselves uh, at times just to kind of get a real feel of it. And especially if you can do it during a school day when classes are in action and, you know, people are, you know, just running around the campus and, you see everything going on and you really want to look for that, you know, do you see yourself there? Do you have the goosebumps? Are you getting the vibe for the campus? You know, that's really important, you know, regardless of how strong the program is, you know, you've got to have that goosebump feeling because you can go to the world's number one college for rank, rank for what you want to do. And if you don't have the goosebumps or the vibes, you're not going to do all that great. And when you don't do all that great, everything else is going to kind of go downhill. And that became the worst ranked school for you personally and your own personal ranking is the most important one so you really want to make sure that you've got that goosebump you've got that vibe for the campus and you see yourself there it's your second home and also those are really important keys and just you know walk all over that campus make sure you take at least an hour or two hours even three eat in the cafeteria go to the student union go to the bookstore uh you know 
check out the you know the fitness centers and and things like that check out the tracks and the walking paths that you see students exercising on and just you know really getting a feel for what life is going to be like on that campus it is really critically important no matter how great that school is for your particular program and you're going to want to take um, a look at your degree track for your programs you know and basically is it aligning with your goals and your timing goals of how long is it going to take to graduate from that institution and basically that goes with the looking at the evaluation of your credits usually sometimes you get credit evaluations right before you find out an answer sometimes you get them as you find out your answer and then a lot of schools uh, once the student has been admitted, they're going to have the final evaluation of all of your transferable credits towards your program, uh, which will be ready for two things for you to take a look at and look at the uh, degree tracks of that particular university and you can kind of come up with your own evaluation of how long it's going to take you, but it's also going to be used during your advising appointment as well, which I'll talk about here in just a second. So after again picking the college that you feel like is the right fit. There's a lot of checklist items here that you'll want to take a look at. And again, this is being recorded, but may not hurt to snap a picture of a few of these slides that we're going over with as well with your phone. But you'll want to confirm your enrollment first and foremost. That's going to open up a lot of pages for you with the university that you're enrolling with, because sometimes they might be waiting for you to confirm your enrollment before they send you all the next steps. Other schools, they'll send them to you all at once so you can see what it's there. But confirming your enrollment really first and foremost is the main thing to do with that particular university. And uh, by the time you confirm, hopefully you'll have that evaluation summary of your credits with you as well. You're gonna to wanna to check with the medical records in the health center to make sure that they were able to use the information off of your transcripts, your mil military um, forms, and see if there's anything else at all that they need. Because if there is something that they need and you haven't provided it, they can put a hold on your registration account mainly, and you may not be able to register for that semester, or maybe they'll let you through for one semester, giving you a deadline during somewhere during your middle of your first semester, and they may block your registration for your next um, set of classes for your next semester. So definitely check with the medical records in the health center on the campus and see, do, I ha do you have everything you need from me? And that can, you know, relieve a lot of pressure. And well, it can relieve some headaches later. It really can. Setting up your orientation, your, you know, acclimation, your orientation to the university, very vital of vital importance because it's going to really tell you you're going to attend a few programs, uh, whether it's going to be in person or a virtual world, whichever way it's going to go. Um, for you for that particular campus. And it's gonna really introduce a lot of student services and veteran services to you as well. And it's gonna give you a lot of contact information. And these are things that you may not need necessarily right at the very beginning, some will be, but some that you're gonna use after you get to the university and to the college campus. And it may be after your second year there, or you know after your first year there that you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I remember that. And this is where I go to get this done. So make sure that you know orientation is set up find out about tutorial centers, you know, those are very important to find out about, you know, what do they offer for tutorial services. You could even do this in the pre-admissions section as well, also to make sure that if there's certain subjects that you know that you may not be so stellar at, find out, you know, do they have tutorial services for that? And also find out, you know, do graduate students, you know, you know, put it, where do they put notifications? Because you've got a lot of great graduate students getting their master's and doctoral degrees that do tutorial tutoring on the side for that particular subject area and that's some of the best tutoring in the world right there so check out that that's something that's really that can help make your transition through your degree to graduation really you know smooth advising and registration is something you're going to set up along the lines of you know right after orientation and this is where you're going to meet your advisor through more, more than likely it's going to be through the department of your major or through the college you know, the departments might be called College of at the university, and um, it'll be done through those particular departments usually. And keep you, sometimes you'll have the same advisor all the way through graduation. Sometimes you might have two or three different advisors in that same area of your major, and definitely a great way to get to know the department as well. And they're gonna set you up. Make sure you've got a copy of your transfer evaluation of your credits with you. Uh, or acts accessible on your laptop if you're bringing your laptop with you or even on your smartphone uh, and they can see that but more than likely they're going to have access to that as well but just in case have it as a backup plan check out the veteran center this can be done pre-admissions this can be done after admissions but go ahead and you know introduce yourself again if you've already talked with them and say hey i am coming here i've confirmed i've got my orientation and advising set up 
and just wanted to let you know that, you know, I'd like to get involved if you want to, uh, possible ROTC program involvement as well, or just, you know, being a student veteran ambassador. Um, that's something that a lot of you'll see at a lot of the veteran centers and a lot of the veterans affair offices as well, that they do look for student ambassadors uh, that were former military, now veteran. And so definitely reintroduce yourself to your veteran centers and veterans affairs centers as well. With your financial aid, uh, and also I'm gonna skip a little bit here, financial aid and payment plans, kind of playing with my little list here. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to talk with them and find out you know, about your GI Bill, if you're using it, you know, and has everything come through? Has all that paperwork come through? And that would be also, payment plans are usually handled by most, at most universities, they're called simply the cashier's office. And you'll wanna check with them to make sure, did, did you get all my paperwork for this? Or has my financial aid come through this? If you're using a combination of the GI Bill and they're paying for everything, great. You just wanna make sure that the cashier's office has gotten that information that you don't need to make a few extra phone calls or emails. Definitely check into that as well and or financial aid. Sometimes they're combo offices, financial aid and the cashiers are sometimes put together in the same, under the same rooftop. So you might be able to take care of all that all at once. And then finally, um, and again, there's a few other things here, but these are gonna be the main things that you're definitely gonna need in order to get started at the university. Your relocation timing, it happens every year. We see some students that will get a call a week before classes and they're like, can you tell me where some apartments are or something along that line? And they, it just snuck, it sneaks up on you. It's so fast. It seems like what's taking forever you know, it's just going to take forever, but what seems like it's taking forever, the real rule is will soon be over and that time will soon be right on you. So go ahead and think about your current living situation wherever you are in the country, even if you're in the same city or if you're looking for that on campus housing, do that during your checklist time. Contact housing and see if they've got on campus housing that you're interested in. A lot of housing, university housing offices will have information about housing opportunity options that are not necessarily related to that university, but they've got that list of really um, well-known apartment complexes that treat uh, their residents really well and that house a lot of the students from that particular university. So definitely check into the timing, check into those payments and the availability for you to move in before school starts. That's really, uh, sometimes you'd be surprised how that falls last on the list in a sense that it is sort of last on the list here, but it doesn't mean that it's any less important. So definitely making sure that you're planning your travel, you know, moving yourself and your, you know, all your belongings, getting to campus. And you really do want to arrive to campus anywhere from, you know, at the very latest, a, a whole week before school starts, but it doesn't hurt to maybe even get there two, three, four, five weeks before just so you can get acclimated to your new town as well also. So this really, you know, is an overall checklist that, you know, through our combined minds when we were all helping each other, you know, figure out this, you know, this presentation, this really, these were really the top ones that, you know, every student should take a look at and make sure that they're knocking these out and just creating that checklist and making sure that this is all that, you know, the main things that you do cover in the very beginning. A few other things could pop up, be ready for that. So um, I will add something, you know, just be flexible uh, that other things could possibly come up and you're gonna wanna take care of those at that time as well. So that's the preparing for transfer part. I'm gonna turn it over to Sydney. Thanks, Taylor. I am actually going to play off of a few topics that Taylor pointed out, just go into a little bit more detail. So this slide right here, it has a lot of words on it. So obviously won't read every single word on the screen, but this slide is really going to help you be ahead of the game. So this is obviously once you've been admitted to the university, this comes into play. So we've mentioned your GI Bill, your benefits several times throughout the presentation already. So the very first place I tell my military students to start is gonna to be to find out who their veteran affair representative is. So whatever institution you choose, you wanna find that connection. They typically call them the certifying official within the, the VA benefits office, depending on where that's located. But they're gonna really help assist you making sure, I know Taylor mentioned it, I believe Brooke even brought up GI Bill, the paperwork, filling out that form to make sure that everything's completed and goes through properly before tuitions do. But in addition to that, so let's say your GI Bill doesn't cover all of tuition. There are so many amazing resources to help military affiliated personnel 
receive the, the aid that they need. So I'll actually jump real quick down to the bottom. I know Taylor just mentioned it. So FAFSA, make sure that you fill it out. It opens every year, October 1st. You just add the institutions you're interested in onto that FAFSA and then you're good to go. So that's a free application right there. And then of course there are some incredible military merit-based scholarships. So Yellow Ribbon is extremely popular. So that is gonna be for not necessarily all institutions, but depending on what institution you're looking at, just research those, those institutions that may offer that tuition assistance. And then there are some state level programs. So North Carolina specifically has one. It's the North Carolina Department of Veteran Affairs State Scholarship. And that website there, that link will take you to explore what institutions offer it. I believe I checked, I think all of us offer that um, at our schools. And then some federal benefits. So let's say the school that you're interested in was requiring you to take an SAT or an ACT or even looking past to GRE, GMAT. Some of the federal benefits will actually pay you for that or pay back that money that you'll have to pay to take those tests. And then as well as different tuition assistant programs that will pay a portion of your tuition if you're active duty. So that's also a huge perk if you're listening and you're still active duty, you haven't been discharged. That is also another great opportunity to make sure that you're using those benefits. It's another huge benefit of being um, a veteran is that you are able to receive this tuition assistance. So we're making sure that you have the steps you need to receive those benefits. So I'll pass it on to Devaney. Alrighty. So I just want to talk and touch a little bit on ROTC programs for those of you who may be dependents of military uh, veterans. So then that way you kind of know how those processes work while you're in college. So what does ROTC stand for? So it stands for the Reserve Officer Training Corps. And with this, there's about 1,700 programs across the United States that range from schools that are large research focused universities to smaller private liberal arts universities. ROTC, it allows our students to the chance to study, but also to serve their country following completion of their degree programs or to participate in a short time in the program without the post-college commitment. I will let you know that the goal of the ROTC programs is to commission officers in the military once you do graduate from college. So you can see a couple of the different branches of ROTC that are offered over on the left hand side of your screen. Army, Air Force, and Navy are going to be the ones that you find. If you are interested in joining the Marine Corps as an officer, you'll want to do the Navy ROTC branch. And then just so you're aware, the Coast Guard does not have an ROTC program, but rather they have a, a ROTC scholar, they have a scholarship that's like a pre-student a college student pre-commissioning initiative, which will offer you a scholarship to pay for your school and then a spot in officer candidate school following graduation. So you'll want to, before you even get into the ROTC programs, you'll want to kind of figure out which one is best for you. We encourage you to visit the branches websites to see the ROTC affiliated schools and programs that are area, that are in that area. Talk with the program directors at the prospective institutions to ensure that you do meet the admissions criteria for that. And then let's talk a little bit about the benefits. You don't act necessarily have to choose between the military and getting your education. This allows you to do both. And then you're able to enter the military with a higher uh, military occupational specialty or MOS as all you um, student veterans may call it. Um, and then which is just a higher pay level. RTC will offer you some different scholarship opportunities. There's oftentimes living in book stipends that are that are given as well. And then last but not least, you're able to gain those leadership skills, decision-making skills, and then mentorship opportunities in college, but most importantly, being able to serve your country afterwards. Awesome, well, last but not least, we have, the Veterans Resource Services are probably one of the most important ways because we brought you through how to find the right fit, the right school, how to apply, how to prepare for that transition and get to the institution, but most importantly, how do you get involved? I know Angie at the beginning mentioned this is a super vital part. If you're going to be an on-campus student, it is so important for veterans to connect with other students that are 
maybe just interested in the same thing as you or other veterans. I know Taylor even mentioned some schools allow student ambassadors for veteran services. So that's a really great way to just assist other people that have similar experiences, similar interests. So this is extremely important. It's going to assist you in that transition, make it a more comfortable process. And then, of course, there are specific veteran clubs, military centers for just a quiet space to get away from sometimes the younger students and then just to connect. So that's extremely important. And we want to just stress that that if you are transferring to an institution to find these centers and really connect because that is going to make your experience all the much better and it's going to make it a longer lasting experience. So you can really brag about the institution you went to, not just because you had an incredible academic experience, but because you made so many incredible connections that you're willing to, to brag about that. So I will wrap it up there and pass it on to Taylor. Okay, everybody. So just in case, um, we put up our contact information here. And uh, I got to tell you that each one of us work with a very talented team in our office. So we all have a lot of colleagues that we work with that are very familiar with transfer admissions and uh, veterans admissions as well. For us, you know, we're sort of the main point of contact at our particular universities, but there are some of you out there that may not have any of us on your radar. <laughs> so uh, in that case, Here's our particular contact information to reach any of us. But if there's another couple of schools that you're looking at, you know, that just, you know, really tickled your fancy, as they say, uh, an easy way to find them usually is most, um, most college names in, or their websites end in .edu. So like if you were looking for something like, you know, California State, it might be under calstate.edu. Or if you were looking at a school up in North Dakota, it could be under NorthDakotaState.edu. I'm just using some names that could be true or hypothetical. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you, even though I've been doing this for a few minutes. Um, but this is our direct contact. And in case you can't reach us, always just con feel free to contact the admissions offices directly and ask for somebody who could help you you know, with like the pre-admissions process or just give you some general advice and then contact you to somebody that is, does work with veterans. Uh, on a regular basis, or even to get that information to contact the veterans services offices, your admissions offices are going to always be your first point of contact. But we just wanted to, since we're the ones giving the presentation, we just want to go ahead and put our information up here for you in case some of you do happen to have an interest in us, which we hope you do. Uh, but just in case, based on what we've told you, you can find a lot of this information at any of the websites across the country, across the world. If you're looking to go overseas to college, basically you can look into the same you know, scenario either through a Google search or a Bing search or whatever your search engine is. And just really starting at the admissions offices are always going to be your, your, your smooth entry basically into gathering your information up front. So with that, uh, this really concludes our presentation and everything like that. I guess we have a few minutes of time to open it up to some questions and answers. If anybody has some general questions or anything like that, we have a question and answer box here on the slide as well for you to put your questions in and then we'll answer them as we come in because we do have a few minutes left over as well. So don't be shy. I know. <laughs> yes, make sure you guys can put your, um, go ahead and put in your questions if you have any. Um, at the moment, we don't have any questions just yet. Um, I will open up the floor for my colleagues. Um, what are some ROTC programs that your school offer, or if you have any, um, we can just kind of do a round robin. Yeah. Um, for Fayetteville State in particular, we um, just have Army and Air Force ROTC. Do any of you have any programs? We are known to have all four branches, but two of them are tied together, as you saw in one of the previous slides. Anything. So you can get involved with any of the four branches as well. As Devaney mentioned, Coast Guard is not typically one of them, but there is a scholarship program through the Coast Guard that is usually accessible no matter where you are going. So um, definitely, you know, any ROTC office, whether they just have one platform or they've got all four, they can guide you, but that's how it works for us. Um, so we participate with North Carolina A&T's um, ROTC program. So our students uh, will be our students, but they get the credit for the program um, through the Greensboro Consortium. Um, but we do Army and Air Force. 
ECU's Army and Air Force as well. And then we don't have a ROTC program at Queens, but we do partner with UNC Charlotte, um, who has an Army ROTC program. And again, one last thing, because um, I don't see any question to answer in there just yet, but if, if we're going to have any at all, but um, if you are interested in that, when you get to whichever university it's going to be, you know, your veterans officers, your veteran center, your veteran resource, your veteran affair office, whatever it might be called, they're basically one and the same at most universities across the nation. They might just have a different title or a different name of that. They can guide you as to the ROTC programs that are available or if they're in partnership with another school nearby. And so it's something that you may definitely want to look into. If not, I can't stress enough basically on what I kind of touched on. Sydney went into further detail about it, about becoming a veteran student ambassador. Because sometimes when you're going to walk in and start looking at these universities and colleges, wherever that may be, it might be that your first person you talk to is a, is a veteran who is at that school who became a, an ambassador for the veteran services. So you'll definitely want to talk to them because they're going to talk to you about their experiences and they'll be able to give you some, you know, unique uh, viewpoints uh, and things that, you know, you should do and definitely steps to take and stuff like that, along with the steps that we mentioned in this PowerPoint. And so they're really a fantastic resource. And then once you get into the system, you can be a fantastic resource for that person who's doing that campus um, tour on the, you know, they've done that or they've done, they're now been admitted and they're walking around and they come walking into the office and they meet you and you've gone through it and you've been there and you've gone through the steps of that particular college and you can give them some pointers and everything. And it's really what you call keep sp spreading the joy basically and spreading the advice. And I definitely can, I really think that that's so important that, you know, veterans get involved with their veteran centers and also become a veteran ambassador as well also. And again, you can get a lot of information there and join the veterans clubs. All of them usually have veterans clubs as well. Those are really fantastic ways to connect with people, you know, who have been in the military in whatever capacity that may have been. So there's so much opportunity for you to be involved with your new college campus and anything. And you should definitely take advantage of that and get involved. It's a great way to start at your new home, uh, academic home, whichever way you might want to refer to it and just be a really big part of that school and then help others in the future after you get there, so. I guess that might be it. I'm not seeing my <laughs> All right, I another question then. <laughs> Maybe we covered it. So for whatever reason, my computer keeps kicking me out of the, the slide. So welcome to the virtual. <laughs> like that. So all right. Well, I'm not gonna be the one that calls it. <laughs> Okay, I have a, a final slide to share. Okay. Um, for those of you who are watching maybe the recording or those of you who are still left here today, um, you can actually find this recording by going to cacro.org. Um, within a week's time, it should be available up on our website. There will also be a four question survey after this um, session completes and that will help us kind of improve for the future. Uh, so please fill that out if you have a chance. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Take care, stay safe. Thank you for your service. Thank you.